Balake. Where is Balake at? My name's Blake. Do you want to go to war, Balake? I'm for real. A.A. Ron. A.A. Ron is back, everyone. Uh, welcome back for a little bit more SPTV, where every day is one step closer to the total collapse of Scientology, folks. Uh, we're talking about Danny Masterson again. I wonder, are you guys getting sick of hearing about Danny Masterson? Because I got to be honest, I'm not getting sick of talking about him. Uh, Danny Masterson is, of course, uh, the actor from that 70s show. Uh, he is uh, now a convicted, a convicted, violent, serial, can I say this word 40 seconds into a video? Let's just do it, guys. Convicted, violent, serial rapist and Scientologist in good standing, Danny Masterson. We learned last week after uh, over three months of waiting, had finally been moved from jail to prison. Now, the prison that he was moved to is not his final home. It's the processing center. He's at a processing center called North Kern State Prison. I have been contacted by an insider who tells me that without any shadow of a doubt, his final home, his forever home, will be a special facility just four miles south of North Kern State Prison. I want to share this information with you. And there's some other information I want to share with you as well. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to sanitize some of the information that I'm sharing here. Uh, we'll do this step by step, piece by piece. I have a viewer named Larry. Larry has a friend named Ken. Ken is 25 years into a sentence he was sentenced to 60 years to life in California State Prison for crimes very similar, but one might say worse than what Danny was convicted of. Uh, now, uh, up until now, uh, the conversations that I have about what Danny's prison experience is going to be like, I have it with my friend, Tommy Scoville. And Tommy served uh, time in uh, about 10 to th uh, ten, 13 years total, uh, nine to 10 years at a stretch in federal prison in California for robbing banks. Uh, now, the federal prison experience is different from the state prison experience. Also, Tommy was a bank robber, which in prison is a respectable crime. Danny is a sex offender. And uh, this person that L Larry's friend, Ken, is also a sex offender and is serving his sentence in California State Prison. So Larry, for quite some time, and Larry, I'm sorry I haven't responded to all of your emails, but for quite some time, Larry has been offering to put me in touch with Ken to get a very clear picture of what Danny's time is going to be like and how Danny is going to survive his time. So first I'm gonna share with you the information about Danny's forever home. And then I'm gonna read for you guys a letter that I got from Ken. And we're gonna talk about it. Okay, so first, and I'm, I'm not gonna screen share, actually here, I'll screen share this part. This is North Kern State Prison. This is the processing facility that Danny is currently in. If we zoom out, you can see roughly where it is in relation to Los Angeles. Uh, it's interesting. It's it's really, I got to be honest, I thought this prison was going to be more in the middle of nowhere. When you zoom in this way, it's not exactly in the middle of nowhere. In other words, if you if you escaped from there, it seems like there'd be places for you to, to run to. But what do I know, guys? I grew up in a cult. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me just read a little bit of information for you here. <clears throat> it says, Danny is currently housed at North Kern State Prison. Ken has told me that he is 100% certain Danny Masterson will end up at a protective housing unit. There are very few protective housing unit facilities within the 34 adult state prisons, and it is rare for a criminal to be selected to a protecting housing unit. There is a PHU only four miles away from North Kern State Prison. That facility is called North Valley State Prison. Okay, let me show you guys where North Valley State Prison is compared to North Kern. It's a 45 minute walk 
five minute, three minute drive, five minute drive. And uh, wow, look at this facility. What we are looking at here is what is very likely to be Danny's forever home. Okay. So it says here, there is a PHU only four miles away from North Kern State Prison. That facility is called North Valley State Prison. <clears throat> Ken predicts that Danny will end up doing his time at that facility. He told me that the PHU contains less than 100 beds. Ken's opinion is that initially Danny will be housed in a single cell until, uh, in, in a single cell, until later, after he is further evaluated, he'll be assigned a cellmate, someone who is also convicted of a sex, sex crime, but who is older and more frail than Danny. Ken said that if a prison staffer were to put the wrong guy in Danny's cell or were to assign Danny to an unsafe yard, and if Danny got injured as a result, the staffer would be at risk of losing his career. The food is the same at a PHU as it is at all other prisons. And like other inmates, Danny will be issued a state-issued tablet. Uh, let's see. Um, okay. <laughs> all right. Here's, here is Ken's opinion about some of the videos I've done with Tommy. And what I'm going to do in, in the future, if I have correspondence with Ken, I'm going to discuss the information I get from Ken with Tommy. I think that would be a lot of fun. Okay, but here's what Ken says about my videos with Tommy. Uh, Ken watched your videos with Tommy about Danny Masterson. Although Ken finds Tommy entertaining, he says, Tommy, uh, he goes, Tommy does not have an accurate picture of how the California state prison system differs from the federal prison system, which Tommy is familiar with. Now, in my videos with Tommy, Tommy uh, comments all the time that state and fed are different. So that's not news. Um, Tommy did not experience prison from the standpoint of a sensitive needs protective custody inmate. And so Tommy's comments and opinions do not necessarily reflect the accurate picture of a sensitive needs protective custody inmate. Ken is obviously himself a sensitive needs protective custody inmate. Um, Ken says that if Danny comes into the state system with prescriptions for sleep medication, Danny would see a psychiatrist at Kern and would most likely be able to continue with the same prescriptions. That's interesting. I feel like Danny would refuse to speak with a psychiatrist for any reason whatsoever, but it would be interesting to see if that changes. Ken says, uh, and, and he offers a thought about, you know, wh when Danny's up for probation, which by the way, the uh, Danny's official paperwork gives a probation date from 19 years from present. Isn't that interesting? Okay. Ken says it is the forensic assessment division that counts uh, regarding Danny's probation. Um, the forensic assessment division is basically a group of state paid forensic psychologists who perform a rather rigorous and comprehensive analysis of each long-term prisoner who comes up for parole consideration. They conduct a lengthy multi-hour interview with the inmate delving into the inmate's background and the circumstances surrounding the criminal offenses. The FAD then submits a detailed report containing a risk assessment to the board, which is used by the commissioners as part of the hearing process. I, I would love to understand whether, you know, 19 years or 20 or 30, whatever, 45 years, whenever Danny comes up for probation, I would love to speak with a professional who has a history of experience in this probation, um, like the probation department or the forensic assessment division. Because if Danny comes up for probation in 40 years and he is not actually admitting that he actually did the crime he was sentenced for, will they ever grant him parole, right? Like, like for someone to ever be granted parole, do they have to admit, do they finally have to be like, yes, do they have to take responsibility for what they did? I've always wondered that. Okay. So the email I just quoted you from is the email just about the thoughts of where Dane is going to end up. There's another, I want to read you a letter guys. I have been very uncomfortable with the idea of speaking to this inmate named Ken. Um, and the reason I'm uncomfortable speaking to him is because of the crimes that he's been convicted of. And I'm just going to read you a letter. He sent me a, a typed letter that, well, he sent it to his friend and his friend emailed me a picture of the letter. And I'm just going to read it to you guys. 
It says, Dear Aaron, my name is Ken. I'm going to leave out some info, okay? I am 65 years old. I am presently serving a 60 years to life sentence in the California state prison. I've been incarcerated for the past 25 years, and I've directly experienced what it means to be a sex offender serving time in the state prison system. I am writing to you in regards to Danny Masterson, whose fate as a newly convicted sex offender sentenced to a long life term in state prison has been a frequent subject on your channel. All California state prisoners have recently been issued specially restricted electronic tablets, which allow us to place and receive monitored voice and video calls using these state issued tablets. Uh, an acquaintance of mine on the outside, Larry, recently sent me several video clips of your, your channel where you were discussing what the prison experience is going to be like for Danny with a contributor of yours, Tommy Scoville, who I gathered from your discussion with him was a federal prisoner who did his time in general population. I can tell you that uh, Tommy's experience as a bank robber in Gen Pop of a federal prison is different than what Danny's experience is going to be here in the California state prison system. Having spent the last 25 years of my life in this system as a convicted sex offender, I may have some additional insight into Danny's upcoming predicament, which you and your listeners might find interesting. If this is something that might be of interest to you, and then he says how I can go about arranging to have either phone calls with him or, or video chats with him. It says, Danny has a hard row ahead of him. Perhaps it might be beneficial for you to get some firsthand knowledge of exactly what he is getting ready to go through from someone who has lived through this experience. Um, I got to tell you, uh, I originally I thought that what he was proposing was doing video chats and coming on live with me on the channel. Um... I was deeply uncomfortable with that, which is why I haven't ever responded to the request to actually talk with, with Ken. The idea of perhaps just having phone conversations with him where he shares information with me that I can then discuss in videos is something I'm probably more comfortable with. But I want to get your guys' opinion on this. Um, what Ken is convicted of is worse than what Danny's convicted of. And I don't even want to give details right now. And um, I will say this. I have not had anyone else offer to share insight into what Danny's exact experience is really going to be. And I will say that um, the conversations that I have had, um, you know, where we speculate as to what, what Danny is going to go through, have left me a little confused in the sense that it seems to me that pretty much everyone who's in prison for what Danny's going to prison for, it seems to me, would not even be able to last more than a few years. It, it seems to me that they would all be unalived. You, you understand what like. I haven't been able to fully wrap my mind around how people convicted of crimes like Danny or worse, I haven't been able to wrap my mind as uh, around how any of these people can survive for 10, 20, 30 years. I have felt like there is a piece of the puzzle missing as far as what's been explained to me about this. Um, I'm seeing a lot of comments in the live chat about don't do it. <laughs> Yes, yes, uh, yes. Um, let me see. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm um, seeing a comment. Just get the information offline. Do not give the guy airtime. Yeah, that's definitely what I'm not going to do. Well, for me, that's not even an option. For me, that's not even an option to bring someone like that on the air, um, even if it was pre recorded and edited. That would be very, very bad. And it's why I haven't even. I've never even responded to the requests. Um, but let me know. Okay, but but if this is the scenario, let me know what you guys think. If the scenario is I simply have communication with him offline, uh, very specific questions. In fact, in fact, one of these emails had a list of very, let me try to find it real quick. It was a list of subjects that I could get more information on if I can find it real quick. I think it was back in 
July. Oh God, I hope I can find this real quick because it was super, super interesting when I was looking through the email today. Ugh. You guys know how much I hate that air. Here it is, here it is, here it is. Okay, the following subjects. Okay, now some of these are already stale because this email that I'm reading here was is literally six months old. Okay, the email says, Ken could give you information about such things such as who decides what prison Danny is going to? What happens when Danny is transferred from jail to prison? Would Danny be in a cell by himself or with a cellmate? Would Danny have to eat prison food? Surprisingly, the answer is no. Would Danny be assigned to a job? Would Danny um, need to take classes as a condition of parole? Would Danny be allowed overnight visits with his wife? Um, if a family member dies, would Danny be allowed to go to the funeral? Uh, would Danny be sent to the hole if another inmate were to attack him? How many hours a day would Danny be in his, in his cell? How often would Danny be allowed to shower? What protection, if any, would be given to Danny in prison? How would other inmates treat Danny given that he is a rapist and a celebrity? Does California prison have time off for good behavior? How does the California elderly prison program work and would it apply to Danny? What is the worst thing Danny would experience in prison other than losing his freedom? Would Danny read hate mail? Uh, would it be helpful or not helpful to Danny in prison that he is a practicing Scientologist? What are the new California laws that could affect Danny's time in prison? Well, I'm seeing a lot of no's in the live chat, you guys. Holy cow. Okay, but what if I did these chats with Tommy? What if Tommy and I spoke to the guy together offline and then discussed the information in videos without ever getting giving the actual identity of the inmate? That's my it's a very specific what if there and you guys let me know in the live chat i'm looking at the live chat and but you know even on the replay crew let me know what you guys think in the comment section it seems to me like it could be helpful if we're not giving the guy a platform if we're not giving him airtime we're not playing any recordings you know uh that's that's the only thing i'm considering at this point but again please let me know what you guys think for sure um okay let's see anything else here no, that's it, guys. That's it, guys. Yeah. Uh, happy New Year's Eve. I'm going to be flying out to the out to the West Coast here in a few hours. So I got one or two more short videos I'm going to do before I head uh, to the airport. Um, hit that like button, guys. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell while you're at it. Anyway, you guys know what to do. Thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, thank you to everyone who watches until the very end. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see a, a different one of my videos, uh, oh, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe right here. Bye!